This is a picture of methane. Methane is an example of an organic molecule. Organic molecules are defined as molecules that contain carbon. That's the only thing that all organic molecules have in common. They contain carbon. Some organic molecules, like cyanide, are deadly. Some organic molecules, like polystyrene or styrofoam, are human-made, not natural. Organic molecules, they contain carbon. There are four major classes of organic molecules that make up the bodies of living things. We call these biological macromolecules, carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. Macromolecules are big molecules. We can call them polymers, although lipids don't really occur as polymers. Polymers are big molecules that are made by connecting together smaller building blocks called monomers. The process of connecting two monomers together to make a polymer is called a dehydration synthesis because a water molecule is given off or lost when the connection is made between two, the two monomers. This is also called a condensation reaction because water is formed, reminiscent of water condensing on a cold window. Large polymers can be broken down into monomers. The process of this breakdown is called a hydrolysis reaction. The word hydrolysis hydrolysis means the splitting lysis of water hydro the monosaccharides or simple sugars are car carbohydrate monomers this picture shows three types of monosaccharide glucose galactose and fructose all three have the molecular formula c6h12o6 that is each is made up of six carbon atoms 12 hydrogen atoms, and 6 oxygen atoms. Each monosaccharide has a fair number of carbon-carbon and carbon-hydrogen bonds. These are nonpolar covalent bonds. As we'll see in a couple of weeks, these bonds store energy that organisms, including we humans, can get energy from. So one of the functions of, functions of carbohydrates is energy storage. The polar OH bonds have partial charges, as we saw with water. This means that monosaccharides can form hydrogen bonds with other charged molecules, and that includes water. This is the reason that sugars dissolve in water. Monosaccharides can combine with one another through dehydration synthesis reactions to form disaccharides. Some familiar examples are sucrose, glucose plus fructose, lactose, glucose plus galactose, and maltose, glucose plus another glucose. More monomers can be added to produce even larger polymers called polysaccharides, or many sugars. Some examples are starch, an energy storage molecule for plants, glycogen, an energy storage molecule for animals, cellulose, a structural component of plant cell walls, and chitin, a structural component of fungal cells and insect skeletons. The carbohydrates, roughly the same number of oxygens as carbons and roughly twice as many hydrogens. Monomers are called monosaccharides and polymers are called disaccharides or polysaccharides. Organisms use carbohydrates for energy and as structural materials. This otter's fur is covered with waterproofing oil. Oils are lipids. Lipids are another type of biological macromolecule. They're also made up of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen atoms, and one kind of lipid also contains phosphorus. Unlike carbohydrates, lipids are almost entirely carbon and hydrogen, with very few oxygens. They're thus made up almost entirely of nonpolar carbon-carbon and carbon-hydrogen bonds. These bonds store energy, like we saw with carbohydrates. And since lipids are almost all carbon-carbon and carbon-hydrogen bonds, lipids store a lot of energy. Having few, if any, OH bonds, lipids lack charge and therefore do not dissolve in water. Triglycerides are one category of lipid. These are fats and oils. They are the main long-term energy storage molecules for living organisms. Another type of lipid is the sterol lipid. These molecules are characterized by having multiple carbon rings. Cholesterol is a sterol lipid. Cholesterol is used to stabilize the cell membranes of animal cells. 
It's also the base material for producing testosterone and estrogen and vitamin D. Phospholipids are special types of lipids. As their name implies, they have phosphorus in the form of a phosphate group. That phosphate group is charged. That means it dissolves in water. But the whole rest of the large phospholipid molecule is uncharged and doesn't dissolve in water. So phospholipids have a dual nature, part water soluble and part water insoluble. This dual nature is very important in allowing phospholipids to be the base material for cell membranes. So lipids are used for long-term energy storage, to make water insoluble steroid compounds like cholesterol, and to make phospholipids, the stuff that cellular membranes are made of. Pretty important functions, but those range of functions pale in comparison to the most important of biological molecules, proteins. That's the topic of the next video.